In this video, we're going to look at non-spontaneous redox reactions. So up to this point, we have been talking about redox reactions in a battery that happens spontaneously. We call those voltaic cells. Um, so in voltaic cell, you know, your anode has a negative charge and your cathode has a positive charge. Well, if you are doing a non-spontaneous reaction, it's called an electrolytic cell. So here we have an outside power source to drive a non-spontaneous reaction, but it's still the same idea. Oxidation happens at an anode and reduction happens at a cathode. So here's a, an image of electrolysis, electrolysis. And here we have our cathode and our anode. Here's zinc and copper. So our anode, copper is going to copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons. So our anode is still being oxidized. And our cathode, we have zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons going to zinc positive. So our cathode is gaining electrons being reduced. But this is a non-spontaneous reaction normally the electrons would leave from zinc and go to copper. So we have to have a battery right here to power this reaction. Um, one practical application of this is the electrolysis of water, where we can split water and create hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Um, about a decade ago now, an idea was, could we power cars with hydrogen? And our source of hydrogen would have been the electrolysis of water. Now, like I said, electrolytic cells. Electrons are taken from the anode. Um, so for this to happen, you have to stick your anode to the positive terminal of your external power source. And electrons are forced to the cathode, so you need to stick it to the negative terminal of your power source. So think of your power source with the positive end. It takes electrons from your anode and all your electrons are at your negative end of your power source, which can then go to your cathode. And the reactions in an electrolytic cell are just the reverse of a voltaic cell. So in a voltaic cell, we might have hydrogen plus elect uh, oxygen goes to water. Um, in electrolysis, we have water being split to form hydrogen and oxygen. And so you need some kind of outside energy source for this because it's non-spontaneous. So we have to put energy into the reaction to make this happen. And sometimes the amount of energy we have to put in is more than what you would predict, predict through theory. And this is called over voltage. It's the extra electricity you have to put in for a non-spontaneous reaction to happen. And we can also do electrolysis of pure compounds. So first we have to get our compound that uh, uh, is comprised of the elements we want to separate. So for example, I have liquid salt, liquid sodium chloride. So this is very hot salt. And in this salt, I put two uh, electrodes which won't react with our salt. Uh, carbon's a great choice for this. And then I can have a voltaic source, um, which takes electrons from one side and gives it to the other. So here, we're making chlorine gas um, and we're making a solid sodium. So electrons are leaving from chlorine, so it's the anode, and they're going to sodium, which is our cathode. And so this is gonna have a lot of industry purposes um, but here we're making chlorine gas and solid sodium from elements. So that's actually how we can get this um, for any industrial needs. And when we talk about stoichiometry of electrolysis, remember stoichiometry is just mole to mole ratios. Um, we have to think about electrons being transferred. So electrons are a reactant for electrolysis, right? And we can calculate the number of moles that through that flow through an electrolytic cell and that's dependent on your current and how long you run it um so we measure current in amps and an amp is simply one column of charge per second 
and a whole mole of electron is 96,485 coulombs of charge. Um, so if you wanted a whole mole of electron to go through a cell per second, um, it would have to be 96,485 amps, which is pretty powerful. But this, um, this idea of a mole of electrons to coulombs, we call that Faraday's constant. And that's it for this video. I will see you in the next video.